Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our worship. When today we'll be thinking about Paul and his relationship with the Church of Corinth and the wonderful series of letters that he wrote to them. Our call to worship comes from uh, 2 Colossians chapter 5, and in verse, verse 14, Paul says, For Christ's love compels us. And I always think about that in terms of that drive that goes on within our hearts to worship the Lord. So it's lovely to have you with us today, and I pray that God's Spirit would compel your heart to enter into the joy of worship of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, and of God the Father. Our opening hymn, Christ Be Our Light, it's lovely to see our own Chris Dyer playing an accompaniment to this hymn. Let's share in it together. For light, we wait in darkness. Longing for truth, we turn to you. Make us your own, your holy people. Light for the world to see. Christ, be our light. Shine in our hearts. Shine through the darkness Christ be our light Shine in your church Gather today Longing for peace Our world is troubled Longing for hope Many despair your word alone has power to help us Make us your living voice Christ be our light Shine in our hearts Shine through the darkness Christ be our light Shine in your church Gather today Longing for food Many are hungry Longing for water Many still thirst Make us your bread Broken for others Shed until all are fed Christ be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ be our light, shine in your church, gather today. For shelter, many are homeless Longing for warmth, many are cold Make us your building, sheltering others Walls made of living stone Christ be our light, shine in our hearts Shine through the darkness Christ be our light Shine in your church Gather today Many the gifts Many the people Many the hearts That yearn to belong let us be servants to one another Making your kingdom come Christ be our light Shine in our hearts Shine through the darkness Christ be our light 
shine in your church gather today Christ be our light shine in our hearts shine through the darkness Christ be our light shine in your church gather today For the love of Christ compels us. The theme that I've uh, entitled uh, for today is God's love changes everything. For those who love God, worship must be at the heart of their lives. Paul had a strange relationship with the church at Corinth. At times, uh, he spoke to them with great warmth and friendliness. And at other times, he had to rebuke them because they had, even though they were filled with the Spirit, they had at times not exercised that Spirit-led ministry in a way that was appropriate. Our reading later on from 1 Corinthians 13 is a very beautiful and well-known passage, but we have to understand that it is a rebuke to the Corinthian church for their lack of love. Nonetheless, Paul still desires the best for them. He says in 1 Corinthians 1 and chapter verses 2 to 3, to the church of God in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus and called to be holy all together with all those everywhere who call on the name of the Lord, their Lord and ours, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. To this church, Paul will write that the tongues and prophecies which they treasure so much, those will cease as the Spirit determines. But the constancy of God's love will remain the cornerstone of their lives. That will be the thing that will last forever. And so he encourages them to grow deeper in their love for Jesus and they're deeper in their love for one another. Our next song, Jesus, We Love You, includes within it a brief time of worship that encourages us to unite our hearts with Christ and in the way of most modern worship songs to tell Jesus how we feel about him as well as enshrining within the music and within the words a wonderful testimony to the love of Christ. Old things have passed away Your love has stayed the same Your constant grace remains the cornerstone Things that we
passion, our devotion poured out on the feet of Jesus. Faith, hope, and love abide, these three, but the greatest of these is love. Divine love, then, as the foundation for all that is of worth. What a wonderful thought that is. No wonder that love prompts a responsive love from our own hearts. And even when that love has not been our, of our best, yet the Spirit takes that love and amplifies it to become a worthy offering to God. Our band lead us in the lovely song, I Stand Amazed. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazareth.
Our reading from Corinthians today is perhaps the most famous of all scripture passages that Paul wrote to any of the churches. From chapter 13. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels and have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy, and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I were to give all my possessions to the poor, and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. For love is patient and kind, it is not en- does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it is not rude or self-seeking, and it is not easily angered, and keeps no record of wrong. For love does not delight in what is evil, but rejoices in what is true. It always protects and trusts and hopes, and always perseveres. Love never fails. Prophecies will cease. Tongues will be stilled. Knowledge will pass away. For now we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when perfection comes, the imperfect will disappear. When I was a child, I reasoned like a child, I talked like a child, and I thought like a child. But when I became a man, I put away those childish things. I laid them behind me. Now we see as if in a mirror dimly. But one day we will see things as they really are. Now our knowledge is only in part. But one day we shall know all things, even as we are fully known by God. Faith, hope and love abide these three. But the greatest of these is love. In a world of cultural, moral and religious diversity that Paul found himself, the one thing that seems to mark out his message to the church and the early Christian communities was to make sure that each of them had a loving identity. They loved the God that they had come to know in a beautiful way in Jesus. And now they sought to love one another and to live out that love within a Christian family. Paul was at the forefront of this appeal to love one another. When he writes to the Colossians, he says, We have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for one another. Epaphras has told us of the love you have for one another in the Spirit. To the Thessalonians, he says, We give thanks to God for your works of faith, your labour of love and your steadfast hope. And now in the letter to the Corinthians, in that wonderful passage, what Paul is describing is not simply an inward act to develop quality Christian fellowship. He meant this love to be a powerful act of testimony to the impact and relevancy of the gospel 
and the way in which this and this alone could confront the ungodliness and wickedness of their age. To love is therefore to mission. For a church with a loving identity is a church that is confident of facing the challenge of mission in whatever age it finds itself. And a Christian with a loving identity is a mission-equipped Christian. The Hebrew Scriptures have three words for love. Yada means to intimately know God and to know one another. Put simply, you cannot love that which you do not know. Hence the critical ministry of Jesus in putting the face and heart of God before us. Soed, the Hebrew word for vulnerable disclosure. If only we in the church share at a surface level, we will never be able to truly love one another at the deepest of levels. To love one another seriously is to be courageous in our sharing, in our fellowship, and do all we can to improve the quality of our love for one another and to make our churches safe places for those who need our help. The final Hebrew word, sakan, is to be caringly involved in one another's lives, to desire to know one another so we are in the best place to care for one another, to enrich one another, to bless one another by the quality of our love one for another. These three different ways of expressing the love of God are risky, frightening even, but surely this is the only kind of love that is worth pursuing. To know God and to know each other, to be vulnerable in the way we are with one another and to be caringly involved with each other's lives. Through these three different ways, we need the love of God to minister to us in order that we can express love in this way. The Gospel reading from John talks about how Jesus wants to get that love of God into us. He says, Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you. And now these my friends know that you have sent me, and I have made known to them and will continue to make known the love that you have for me, so that it may be in them, and that I myself may be in them. Jesus wants to get the love of God into our hearts. The band leaders in our second of their songs, Love Came Down. Jesus prayed in John chapter 17 that his disciples would be filled with God's love and that he would be in them. Love Came Down is a song by Ben Cantillon that affirms our experience of this. I was going to quote some of the lines, but actually they all affirm God's love experienced in our lives in some way or other. So I invite you to worship, whether by listening and enjoying, or by joining in, as we sing Love Came Down.
by grace I'm free You rescue me All I am is yours I found a love Greater than life itself I found a hope Stronger and nothing compares I once was lost Now I'm alive In our prayers of intercession, I'd like us to think about the positive things that are happening and to pray for encouragement uh, for those people who are engaged in doing wonderful, godly, loving things in our communities. Let us pray. Gracious and most holy God, whose love is beyond all things, a love which will stand and endure for all time. A love which is the foundation of our spiritual journey. Shed abroad that love in our hearts, we pray, as now we gather to remember those who are seeking to do what is right and good in our community and in our world. We pray for those who are caring for the sick and the dying, we pray for those who are looking to the needs of the isolated and the lonely. We pray for those who are offering support and wisdom to the perplexed and the worried. Gracious God, sustain them with your love that they may share it in their mission and ministry to the world. We pray today for those who are struggling to express your love in the most difficult of places, in places of famine and war, in places of neglect and trouble. We pray, Father, as they sometimes plough a lonely furrow of compassion and care, that your love would be to them your, their strength and that you would meet them at their point of need this day. We pray for all those who are finding it hard to trust to love, who have been hurt by those whom they once trusted. We pray that they would learn of the love of Christ on which they can truly depend. And we pray for ourselves that we may take every opportunity to express the love of Jesus, not only personally, as a testimony to your presence in our lives, Lord, but also corporately as churches, that we would be known for our love in the communities in which we are set. For this, our prayer, we ask in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Sometimes it's very hard to hold on to love but our next song gives us an encouragement so to do. There is a place for the sadness Hold on to love There is a season of gladness Hold on to love When pain and confusion seem endless Hold on 
to love. We cultivate healing through kindness. Hold on to love. Hold on to love where hope is found. Hold on to love where joy abounds. Hold on to love where grace and mercies overflow. Hold on to love. When terror and fear overwhelm us, hold on to love. Courage and faith will sustain us. Hold on to love. When violence seeks to destroy us. When hatred is used to divide us, hold on to love. Wisdom and truth reunite us. Hold on to love. When prejudice poses its freedom, hold. The blessing for our service today comes from Paul's letter to the Corinthians, this time his second letter to Corinthians, chapter 13, his final greetings. May these be words penned thousands of years ago, but which strike a chord in our hearts today. Finally, my brethren, I say goodbye, and I ask you to aim for perfection. Listen to my appeal. I pray so that you may be of one mind and may live in peace so that the God of love and peace will be with you. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. I began the service by speaking about the letter to the Corinthians as the theme for that would be God's love changes everything. That's the title of our final sending song and I commend it to you. Take care. God bless. I see his body breaking I see his fingers bleed. I see the darkness tremble at the ground below his feet. And 
in the darkest hours there on Calvary he was sweetly broken broken beautifully broken beautifully so come on into